All right, guys, we are live, and I apologize, I'm four minutes late. Wow, what am I thinking? Did I, did I even shave? Oh, it's been, I've been up since like 5.30. <clears throat> yep, I got light going, light's good. Got my water right here, got my light on. We're all good. So um, so we're going to talk about, uh, let's start by going through some of the videos that are coming up, because I like to do that, give you a sneak peek. Um. You know, I've been thinking about what, what, sorry about that. Maybe you can hear me now. My mic might have been cut off, sorry. Um, I've been thinking about video ideas, um, some uh, really basic, uh, easy cooking. Uh, go back to some of the simpler how-to videos. How's it going, Darren? What's up? So let me open this window up. Uh, let's go widescreen. There we go. Good morning, Daddy Dutch Barbecue. How are you? Um, yes, Jocelyn, you were first. So anyway, congratulations. So um, I don't know if you guys saw the steamer basket yesterday, but I was sent the silicon, uh, silicone, excuse me, silicon. Why am I saying silicon? Silicone um, baskets, they're steamer baskets that go in your crock pot. I mean, not crock pots, your pressure cookers. And they're really... It's funny because when I first saw them, I thought, I'm not going to do a video on steamer baskets. That's lame. And then I started looking at it. It had a little snap. It, it never got hot in the in the um, pressure cooker. I was really impressed. Hi, Stephanie. How you doing? Uh, good morning. Is it Kane? And uh, uh, Frost, can I be a mod? No, I will. Uh, after I get to know you a little bit longer, especially... Somebody with no profile picture doesn't get to be a mod on this channel, but thank you for offering. I appreciate it. Um, anyway, um, hey, how's New York? I bet it's cooling off in New York, huh? Yeah. So you've been watching since 15,000 subs. That's crazy. I remember when I first started, we did three videos. We did how to cut an onion without crying, which is totally wrong, by the way. I need to redo that video. Uh, I found out all the re how to how to not cry when you're cutting an onion and that video was just totally wrong it was horrible um how to peel a, an egg and uh, how to cut a pineapple so we um and it's not hang it in your kitchen and slice it with a knife it's not that even though i have a video i have another episode coming up where i'm doing that um it's um those are the three videos we did when we first started the channel my my brother was like hey we should you know, do these, do these cooking tips and stuff and put them on YouTube. So we did three, we did them at my buddy's house and he shot the whole thing and he did all the editing. I didn't even know editing software. So, um, Hey Canada, what's up? Canada's in the house. All right. So, um, anyway, so we shot those three videos. We put them on YouTube, um, and people started watching and it was like, wow, people really care about peeling an egg or cutting a pineapple or whatever. I mean, pineapples are like, one of the hardest things to cut, really. But I think uh, the hardest thing to cut is the, uh, is it summer squash? It's like rock hard. You have to like, I have to use a knife and a hammer and a towel and put the towel over the knife, cut into it, and then hit it with the hammer to get it go through the hard exterior. Coconuts are hard too. But um, Jack, you said, if I come back next week, you will make me a mod. Do you remember? All right. How about this? I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, you were very kind. You came back, and I appreciate that. <clears throat> How about you give me a profile pic, and uh, then we'll talk about it. And uh, I uh, I haven't known you long, so I don't know you by username. I know a lot of the, like, everyday barbecue I know. I know my buddy Michael. Good morning. How you doing? Um, I know him, so I'll make him a mod. And... Uh, I don't know you, add moderator, there we go. So Everyday Barbecue, you are now uh, my buddy Michael over at Everyday Barbecue. He is a mod now of this. Uh, anytime he joins me, he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to be a moderator. My moderators, if you're in, like CJ is also a moderator. These are people I personally, personally know. So, uh, so, and I trust them. So they'll see a comment that's not appropriate and they'll ban the dude from the channel. So anyway, uh, so whenever he Michael's around, he can have the ability to be a mod. All right, let's get back to those three episodes. So we did the three episodes. We started getting hundreds of views. 
it was when nobody knew how to spell YouTube. Nobody knew anything. YouTube was not a thing. And I don't even know if Google owned it by then. I think they were in the process of buying YouTube. Um, I can't even imagine whoever owned YouTube. I mean, what they must be thinking now. Um, so anyway, um, so we did the three videos and they took, they took off. And then uh, we started getting subscribers. We got up to 2,000 subscribers. And it took it took months. It didn't happen like overnight. So um, it, it was interesting. So I uh, I basically um, I was watching those videos, and Google calls me. Now this is back in the day when Google had to invite you to be a uh, not Google YouTube. YouTube calls me, and YouTube had to invite you to be a YouTube partner and put commercials in front of your videos. It, it wasn't wasn't like probably when you guys started watching YouTube, you could just flip a switch and monetize, you know, belching or whatever. Um, so anyway, they said, hey, you want to be a YouTube uh, partner? I'm like, yeah, that's great. I, I said, hey, Charles, um, you know, YouTube just called and they want to make me a YouTube partner. What's a YouTube partner? I didn't know at the time. So anyway, um, that's all history. That was 12 years ago. And what's interesting, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Um, I'm already thinking Thanksgiving. You guys are wondering, where, where's your Halloween video? I had a Halloween video. Where I have all the ingredients for the Halloween video. And I realized about eight years ago, I made something that was similar to what I was going to make. So I decided not to do that recipe. Um, it was, uh, they were like graveyard brownies. Uh, I had done a graveyard cake. I don't want to do that again. I don't want to just do Halloween videos because everybody's doing Halloween videos. Um, but um, so I basically x made that uh, and I did my L.A. tacos, which is coming up. L.A. street tacos. That's a great one. So anyway, have you ever reviewed cut cone knives? Uh, I'm a junk collector asks me if I've ever done. No, I've. I've used Cutco knives. They're they're really good. Um, it, they have they kind of have a they're kind of infamous because they're a multi marketing uh, company. And uh, but but they do they do work and they do last forever. Cutco knives. So if you love Cutco knives, that's great. If you love Pampered Chef, that's great. All those companies are really good. Um, but uh, you know, I don't even know if you have to sharpen how often you have to sharpen those knives. I have never really tested them. No, I haven't reviewed them yet. If I get the opportunity or somebody, you know, if Cutco sends me a set, sure, I'll review them. I'll give them an honest review. But um, so what do you think of that uh, Knife Aid? Did you guys did you guys watch Shark Tank? Knife Aid was on Shark Tank. I did a, a video for Knife Aid where we I, I took the crappy knives and I banged them with a hammer, made them crappier. I didn't think you make Dollar Tree knives even worse. Um, so you can send Cutco back to the company to sharpen. Hmm, that's interesting. I'll have to look into that. That that's cool. But so Knife Aid got a deal on Shark Tank. They got half a. They had people. They had like four out of the five sharks begging for a deal. And if you saw it, they followed them. They wanted to privately talk in the hallway, and the sharks got up and went after them. It was pretty funny. So um, they really wanted to be a part of this company. So Knife Aid's cool. Um, you know, I recommend it if uh, you need a, a gift for your wife uh, or if you're a knife collector, send a whole bunch in and get them all taken care of. If you know how to do it yourself, that's great. I applaud you. If you know how to sharpen your own knives, uh, I've been sharpening for years and I don't know which sharpener is the best sharpener. Um, I know you don't do the one like the shark that you pull your drag your knife through. Those just tear up your knives. I mean, you can see shards of metal flying off the knife. So uh, don't use those. You want to use like a wet, you know, if you're going to do your own, do a wet stone. Or uh, I recommend, um, the, what was it, a warthog, I think it was called. The kind that, that you put the knife in, it's kind of like at angles. And you could set the degrees of the sharpness. Um, hmm. Let's just uh, hide that user. There we go. Uh, anyway, I love it. The filtering is getting better on this. It asks me if I want to show comments or not. It shows me which one it is. And then I can just ban them from the channel. That's cool. So um, um, 
anyway, back to the, the knives. If you sharpen your own, I know there's a machine uh, from Bed Bath & Beyond or probably Williams Sonoma too, that you can drag your knives through depending on what what condition the knife's in. If you just need to hone it, you drag it through. They're like three slots and you just drag the knife through. And it's, uh, mine's called Chef Something. I'll have to show you guys in one of my videos, but uh, that's that's one machine that I've been using for a while. And then if it's really bad, it needs to put the edge back on. Uh, I don't know if you guys know the difference between sharpening and honing. You know those rods that they always they always drag their knives. That's honing a knife. Okay, usually you want it's kind of made out of um, the diamond material or something, and you drag your knife across and you put the Honing the knife is putting the edge back on. It's not sharpening. You know, you're just trying to straighten the knife out. Um, you kind of you kind of sharpen maybe every other month. Depends on how much you use your knives. If you cook a lot, then you sharpen every every maybe two months or three months, and then you hone your knife every time you use it. I mean, I do. You don't have to, but if you got one of those honing rods, if you don't have one, then go get one. They're, they're inexpensive. A really nice one. The material is important. So you need to look, look, do some homework. Um, my brother is, is great at doing homework. He, all, he says, it's great. You go to Amazon and you read all the reviews. The reviews on Amazon are great. Whether you buy it from Amazon, I don't care. But uh, you can go over to Walmart. You can go to Target. You can go anywhere that you like shopping. So get yourself a honing rod. That should be done. Every time you pull a knife out to do work, Go ahead and hone it. I'm sure Everyday Barbecue does that. Uh, he does some delicious dishes, too. Michael does some great stuff, so you should check out that channel. Um, he is a personal friend. And uh, when is that? Let's see. I have cut cow. All right. I mean, we just had our Thanksgiving on the 14th. Oh, so Canada. That's right. You guys just had Thanksgiving. We haven't had Thanksgiving yet, so we're. I'm still thinking about all the dishes I want to do. I want to do all my dishes um, I want to smoke on my dishes. I want to do an entire um, Thanksgiving dinner on my smoker. So I'm going to be doing that. Uh, so I call dibs on that. If anybody else does that, they just rip me off. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to be doing some, we'll be doing the turkey and some sides on my smoker. So that'll be fun. So it's Thanksgiving in a smoker, basically. Um, well, even be, I think we're even going to smoke our dessert. I don't know. Could you imagine smoked chocolate chip cookies or something? That's crazy. Or smoked rice pudding? That would that may not be good. I don't know, but the smoked apple pie was amazing. That was really good. So you guys should check out that video. It was Lazy Man's recipe. So you literally just pour it in the in the thing and put the strips on top, and you're done. And then pop in your smoker. Super easy. All right, let's get to the videos coming up. I got I opened a tab to talk about what's coming, and I didn't I didn't get into that. <laughs> Hold on one second here. Uh, ah, YouTube is ever changing. Never. I mean, now they've got my menu all scrunched on the. If you guys work on YouTube, you have the the bit where you look at your videos and you manage your videos, and they've got on my menu all scrunched and oh, it's a mess. Anyway, so the steamer basket for instant pot or for the ninja foodie. Uh, which I'm more of a fan of the Ninja Foodie, but Instant Pot's been number one for many years. You can use the basket to rinse your macaroni in or rinse your vegetables off before you put them in the pressure cooker and then just drop the basket into the pressure cooker. Uh, you can do pasta. You can do whatever you want. You can just use it as a, as a drainer. Uh, just put it in your sink and put your pasta after boiling it into that steamer basket. You don't have to use the steamer basket to steam. You can just use it to rinse off food and drain it. So let's see, Wendy's chili did really well. Um, you guys really liked that recipe. That was so close, it was crazy. That really tastes like Wendy's chili. And by the way, a lot of you couldn't tell the difference. Most of you picked the Wendy's chili. I put them side by side in my social media. And I said, which one's mine? Which one's the Wendy's chili? And I think mine had more meat or bigger size meat. Um, I know Wendy's. I've been hearing from a lot of ex-employees that Wendy's uses their old burger patties. They chop them up and throw them in the... Okay, that's just gross. I didn't want to talk about that. But anyway, um, that's what supermarkets do. Let me tell you what supermarkets do before we go any further. 
So you got to be real careful with supermarkets because you never want to buy chicken salad at a supermarket. You want to make it yourself. Never buy it at the supermarket because that's literally the last stage. So supermarkets, um, you know, it's a whole ch whole chickens. Okay, it starts off as whole chickens, fryer chickens. I don't know if you guys know how to cut a fryer chicken. I think I've done that video. If not, I'll have to double check. If not, I'll do it for you. How to cut up a chicken. Some people don't know that because you buy it already cut up. So that's the first stage. When it starts getting yucky, they open the fryer chicken and rinse off the slimy stuff. And they cut it up themselves and then prepackage it with the skin on. Then when it starts getting yucky, they dunk it in like a bath and they remove the skin. And then they, it's like it's skinless. Uh, and then they repackage it. And then, like, the last step before it's ready to get thrown out is they'll cut up the chicken meat and they'll dice it up and they'll cook it and they'll put it in the in the deli as chicken salad. And, and you know, I, I heard that and I'd never – I don't buy chicken salad at the store anymore. After I heard that, that was so gross. So realize when you buy chicken salad at the store, that's what they're doing. Hold on. How are we doing in the comments here? Oops. Hey, Arizona's here. I'm just checking. Do, 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 do. And they'll replace broken ones. Okay, Darth says that Cutco replaces broken knives too. Good, because I break them. I don't know why I break them. That's weird. I'm not seeing. Not seeing anything in the comments. Anyway, so um, I'll just continue talking. Then, um, if you guys have any questions, you can pop them in the. Oh, here it is. That was a great episode. Oh, how are you? I'm so excited I was able to catch you live. You're to do true, true. Thank you so much. It's K Confections. Thank you so much. You were so sweet. And uh, oh, you remember the Three Pigs video? Oh, I, I've done them. I've done over a thousand videos just on cooking with Jack, not counting Jack on the go, but cooking with Jack. I got my Jack on the go hat coming. My Jack on the go beanie. Uh, I ordered some samples for myself. Um, but, yeah, you can, you know, the weather's coming. If you want to get the beanie, the Cooking with Jack beanie, my logo's on it. You want to get Jack on the Go beanie, my logo's on that. But um, there'll be some uh, Jack on the Go shirts coming, too. I haven't designed them yet. So, anyway, um, let's see what we got here. Let's test that out. I'm just going to put something real quick. Yeah, I'm not seeing my comments, and I don't know why. That's weird. Why am I not seeing the comments? Let's see. Oh, well. I'll just keep it going because I, I'm, for some reason, the... Whoops. Cancel. Oh, here we go. When are you going to allow comments? Christian wants to know that. Thank you, Christian. Um, he had a super chat comment pop up here. When are you going to allow comments? Once again, um, I allow comments on my personal social media. The reason why is YouTube's everybody. And there's so many people, as you can see, I'm totally blocking people that I don't want to deal with and I don't want to hear from. So we just shut them up. The reason we got rid of comments, which we did on January 1st, we got rid of the comments on YouTube. But if you have a comment, you can always go to my Facebook. There will always be a posting of every video I do on Facebook, Instagram, and um, uh, Twitter. And you can comment under the video there. So, um, so the people who are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are more personal friends. People on YouTube, uh, I love you guys, and I appreciate you guys. Uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. I will continue to preach that to the day I die, that this show wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you. But there's, like, other people floating around that I just don't want to hear from. And uh, they continue to do their thing, and and that's why we just shut it down. It just It's easier to shut it down than to filter a thousand videos with a hundred comments a day coming in. I mean, it just comes pouring in and pouring in. So when am I going to allow comments? I'm not. I'm not turning it back on. 
I've got more artists that are following suit. Oh, morning, CJ. I didn't see that. Hey, what's up? Um, <clears throat> so, oh, your kids woke woke you up. <laughs> That's always fun. I remember. I remember Christmas morning. It's like, don't come out of your room if it's seven o'clock. Don't come out of your room until seven o'clock, and we have to call you out Christmas morning. So, yeah, regarding your comment, your question, when you're going to allow comments, I always allow them. So, friend me on social media. I, if you're not on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, I don't know what to say, but uh, you're more than welcome to comment there. All right. Thank you, Christian, for your your question. So anyway, um, yeah, I remember uh, I love Christmas morning. It's always a hot cup of coffee. It's always the um, Pillsbury. What do you guys do on Christmas morning? We do the Pillsbury cinnamon rolls and we open presents. And it's funny because my mom said a lot of the traditions when I grew up as to how we do it. She never liked us open, just ripping open our gifts. She made us do it one at a time so that she could see everything. So I thought, hmm, that, that's cool. So anyway, so we, we take about an hour, hour and a half to open our gifts. You know, we do it so everybody can see, everybody can see your expression. Uh, I remember one time I bought my brother, like I, I was looking for the worst gift ever. So I found a wooden carved duck, no lie. <laughs> they gave it to him for Christmas. I wanted to see what how he would react to a crappy gift. So I wrapped it up and I gave it to him. And I'm like, isn't that great? When I saw that, I thought of you. I mean, I played it up like I was really interested, but uh, but I wasn't. And then I gave him his real gift. I didn't, I didn't burn him. Uh, when are you going to? Oh, yeah, that, that one's still on top. All right, let's see what else is going on here. I like your tech channel, too. Oh, I just bought. Oh, I don't have it here. I just bought the Google Nest Mini. Now, if you guys know the Google Mini, the Google Mini is like Google Home, but a little smaller. And uh, the Google, they've changed the name. They got the second generation just came out. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Google Nest Mini. And they said the Google Nest, so like the Google Google Mini, the old ones are like 39 bucks right now. Super treat, cheap. Um, if you have a Spotify account, you can get a free one. Uh, if you sign up for Spotify, they give you a free one. They're just dumping Google Minis everywhere. So the Google Nest Mini, oh, the merch is, um, it's on teespring.com. Uh, but you can look under any one of my videos. There'll be, you'll see the... Um, the merchandise, the hats, the phone cases, all that. And uh, just click on one of those. It should take you to the store. It should. If it doesn't, let me know. So anyway, I'm going to show you side by side the Google Mini and the Google Nest Mini. I wanted to know what's the difference. They look identical, exactly the same. Um, so anyway, um, so I put them side by side. I'm gonna, We're going to listen to them side by side. But uh, yeah, I have a, a tech video coming out on the Bose uh, wireless that just fit right in your ear. There's no wire at all. You don't have a big dangling thing sticking out of your ear like Apple. I can't stand that. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so um, just checking out your guys' comments. So anyway, um, yeah, if you haven't watched Tech Time, uh, I'll post a link for you on social media. I'll share the link once again. For those of you who don't know, it's called Tech Time with Jack. So if you search for Tech Time, you'll get some other channels. If you do Tech Time with Jack, then you'll get my channel. So anyway, um, there's been some stuff. All right. So some of the videos that are coming, let's take a look here. Uh, today are the Quest potato chips. If you guys like chips, these are low-carb chips. Uh, like the whole bag is like maybe four or five grams. So uh, check those out. Uh, very impressed with those. And then uh, LA Street Tacos. I honor my roots from California. I honor all my friends from California. We talk about how great the LA Street Tacos are. If you've never had an LA Street Taco, hold on a minute. Okay, it's really cool. I'm going to tell you, you know, you're going to watch the video anyway, but I'm going to tell you. An L.A. Street taco is probably one of the best tacos I've ever had. And an L.A. Street taco is, they make them right in front of you. They take it like a, is it masa or matzah? 
I can't remember. It's a masa ball, and it's a ball of dough, and they put it in a press. Right in front of you is a press it, just like you do at the back of the Mexican stores in California. Well, these guys are right on the curb, right on the street. You just walk up to them. They're fresh salsa, everything, tomate, uh, tomatillo. Excuse me. Is it tomateo? Uh, the tomato, the green salsa. Uh, they have three different salsas for you to choose from. And then they press your tortilla, and then they fry it on a flat iron grill. And then they give you the meat and the onion, cilantro. They'll give you the carrots and the radishes on the side. Love that marinated stuff. Jack, what are your thoughts on Wagyu beef? Okay. Um, Wagyu is supposed to be the second best beef in the world. Um, it, people, it's like organic. People use that term Wagyu beef and it's not, or it's some cheap knockoff. It's not true. Um, from what I heard, I believe Wagyu beef was Australian. Uh, where Kobe is more Japanese. Um, and Kobe, I mean, they massage the cows. They play music for the cows. I mean, they treat the cows like royalty. And they fatten them up. It's probably the, it's the fattest. Kobe's the fattest. It's, I think it's illegal to sell in America. And if not, if you guys get your hands on it, um, let me know. Because it's supposed to be the best ever. So anyway, so Kobe's the best. Uh, Wagyu beef. I believe is is lied about a lot. So be real careful. Be real careful with a lot of beets. You guys got to know your meat because um, when you get a boneless ribeye, it could be meat glued meat. You never know. Oh, here we go. Just refreshed. Do do ooh, San Diego native. Hey, have you ever been, Darren? You ever been to Hodad's in San Diego? Yeah, that's pretty cool. SoCal in the house. Yep. Cooking with CJ SoCal, that's where he's located. Tomatillo, there we go. Thank you. All right. Uh, I love my California friends. They know all the, the ling, I mean, how to pronounce everything. They do it right. Let's see. Oh, they feed them beer, right? <laughs> I don't know if they feed the cows beer. <laughs> I have to find out. Hey, we have somebody from Turkey. Is it San Kektar? Is that the pronunciation? Uh, welcome. Thanks for joining the show. So anyway, um, Enough about that. So let's talk about some other things going on. There's so much going on today. Um, let's see here. What do I got going on today? I think I'm filming the sugar-free barbecue sauce. I have like three different flavors, so I'm going to find out which flavors. Is it that G, G Hughes, I think it is? Sugar-free barbecue. I posted it on social media. People are still commenting on it. So anyway, um, you can get it in America. I've seen it on menus in Vegas. Vegas lies. Don't trust the Vegas restaurants. I, I've been I've been to Vegas many times, and I've seen Kobe beef in, in one of the restaurants. And from what I'm almost positive, it's illegal in America. I'm almost positive. So double check that fact. But last time I heard, you're not able to buy Kobe beef in America. Who knows? Now with the with all the importing and exporting and everything. I don't know what's going on. But uh, hey, have y'all watched the uh, do do do? Uh, wait a minute. Oh, matzo balls. I think the matzo balls was not the tortilla balls. I think it's masa. I think it's pronounced masa. So anyway, the matzo balls is the Jewish dough that's in their soup. Um, yeah, I've had that too. Uh, if you haven't had Jewish food, go to Catella Deli. Back in California, Catella Deli was right across from Los Alamitos racetrack. And it has some of the best food over at Catella Deli. You can get, you can get matzo ball soup. You can get a bunch of stuff. You can get a great, a great Reuben. You can get any corned beef all the time. And you can order pastries from their, from the bakery. I think it was it's still Catella Deli and bakery. So um, love going out to Catella uh, Deli. That was a favorite place of mine. So anyway, <laughs> Uh, thank you, CJ, for watching my back there. Appreciate it. So um, today I'm going to the women's prison. Tammy and I, once a month, we go, our church goes to the women's prison. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect the first time we went was last month. And uh, we go out there to just, you know, talk to them. And um, it was interesting. It was 
tougher than I expected. All right, I was scared. So anyway, no, I wasn't scared. I love those ladies. They were sweet. They were nicer than I expected. That was a surprise. Uh, they were nicer. They were welcoming. Um, I can tell you this, though. I found it very interesting because we were there for them. We were there to love on the ladies that were at the women's prison. Um, I would go to the men's prison, but uh, I can't because it's Wednesday nights and I have another uh, promise on Wednesday nights that prevents me from doing the men's prison. So I joined Tammy and there's other guys that go too to the ladies' prisons. One guy's been doing it for three years. So uh, we go out there and we talk with them and we friend them and uh, we, we show them love and, um, and it, it's all good. It's all good. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Other than that, I, I have the whole day free. I think I'm just going to watch college football all day. So uh, I know you guys. Did you? Can you guys believe Alabama? Okay, so not only do I hate them more now than ever have because I'm a Tennessee supporter, but they couldn't even cover the spread. They had to win by – I won every game last week. Every college game I told you I was betting on except that Alabama game. It was crazy. So I lost like, I bet like $10, but I did a parlay card. So that means I win like 400 and something. I would have won big had Alabama covered the spread, but they couldn't beat Tennessee by 35 points. So it was, I think it was 35, 14 or something. The fact that Tennessee even scored on them, I was amazed. And they did it early. I knew I was screwed. When I saw t Tennessee make a touchdown, I'm like, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to win this game. But uh, every other game I won. Uh, on that, but it doesn't matter if you lose one, you lose it all. So anyway, um, that's what I'm going to do today. Um, I haven't picked any games for today. I have some pro games I'll share with you before I go, but I didn't do any college. Just Google that only eight restaurants in America sell it. Really? All right, cooking with CJ. He just Googled, uh, co is it, do you, hmm, I'll have to look that up. So only eight restaurants sell it. It's, it's wicked expensive. If you, if you get true Kobe, you're going to pay through the nose. Just be ready. Any pellet cooker recommendations? Um, pit bosses are doing great. Um, very inexpensive. And they're built just like the rest. There's nothing that, that I mean, you know, the, the big, like, what the big, what is it, Big Bear Grills that I was speaking with. I don't know if I'm ever going to show that, but. They've got Wi-Fi, and they have a trap door that will dump your pellets. If you can find one, if I know Pit Boss doesn't have it yet. I told him that's what I need in the next model. Give me a trap door that my pellets can dump so I don't have to vacuum out my pellets. Nothing's worse than that. I'm like, seriously? I got to vacuum out my pellets to change flavors? I want to open the door and have them all drop, and then close the door and fill the pellets again. So I recommend Pit Boss. I recommend... The Pit Boss is probably the cheapest brand right now that I know. That's got a, they're out of Arizona. It's not owned by Walmart. It's not a Walmart brand. It's not a Target brand. It's not a Home Depot brand. But it's located in all the, all those places. So, um, <clears throat> just checking out some of your comments. Kobe beef is great. Yeah. If you've ever had Kobe beef, oh, you had it in Korea. That's cool. Um, just going to Korea would be awesome. So anyway, um, yeah, I can't I can't remember what Kobe beef tastes like. I've had it once too. Anyway, hold on one second. There we go. That's nice. There we go. Right there. Side up. Block somebody. All right. Anyway, um, so let's go to uh Jack on the go. What did I do? What was the latest Jack on the go? Which it's interesting because Jack on the go was became popular. It's funny. It's not as big as cooking with Jack, but like locally, because there, I do a lot of local places uh, like in California, big, big fan base from California watches Jack on the go because they did a lot of restaurants in California, Vegas, San Diego, uh, on my cruises, whenever I traveled. Um, but, uh, looks like, um, oh, the tamales are, are back at meet the barbecue place that I highly recommend it. If you're in Hendersonville, 
there's a lot of things that are good out here. A lot of food places come in. And one of the great ones is called the Meat Sweats. Not the best name, but basically the Meat Sweats serves tamales now. Uh, he's Tex-Mex. So, I mean, the guy can nail a brisket. That's something I'm I'm really working at because I remember every, every time I cook a brisket, it's drier than I'd want it to be. It's like cooking a pork loin. I'm sure cooking with CJ can, can relate. Um, cooking a pork loin, I don't care how you cook it. I mean, you got to sous vide it in liquid. I mean, you got to put some marinade in the bag and then sous vide it just to get it, get some moisture on it. With Thanksgiving coming up, could do some low carb recipes for Thanksgiving. I don't know if I'm going to do low carb. I've already planned. Um, let me tell you what I'm doing for Thanksgiving. I'm spatchcocking uh, the turkey, uh, and then I'm going to smoke it. And then I'm going to do some, uh, I think I'm doing uh, wasabi mashed potatoes, wasabi cheese mashed potatoes. So it would be cheesy, too. So I'm going to go get wasabi cheese and put the mashed potatoes. Um, I'm going to do the uh, Brussels sprouts and bacon, smoked, the maple Brussels sprouts and bacon. And then I'm going to um, do the... Uh, Mac and cheese, smoked mac and cheese. But I have replacements for all that. You can replace them. You can do cauliflower mac and cheese. You can do um, um, cauliflower mashed potatoes. You can, you know, you can replace the let's see, mac and cheese. Uh, you can do the Brussels sprouts and bacon. That's good if you're looking for a, a keto type low carb uh, dish. Just leave the maple out. Don't put maple syrup on on your stuff. So anyway. So, uh, so I think that's what the menu is for Thanksgiving. I remember I did a Dollar Tree Thanksgiving. Do you guys remember that? That was fun to try and make the. I think it was under fifty dollars. I did an entire Thanksgiving dinner under fifty dollars. That was fun. Um, so we're going to. Uh, I think I'm going back to Aldi's. I had fun at Aldi's. I can't find that low carb bread anymore. I reviewed it. I told you everybody's buying it and everybody's still buying it. So like it's sold out every time I go to Aldi's trying to get my hands on more of that low carb, that zero carb bread. That stuff's amazing. That's why it's always gone. It sells out as fast as they can put it on the shelf. Mm. <sighs> Excuse me. So anyway, let's see. Sounds good. Yeah. So, um, if you need if you need recipes, I highly recommend go to Pinterest. That's where I go for a lot of recipes. Like for Thanksgiving, I'm going to go to uh, Pinterest for a lot of the or really wasabi mashed potatoes I'm making up myself. It'll have garlic, it'll have wasabi cheese, it'll have uh, butter, it'll have some other ingredients, it'll have a green. Um, I've already got I've got the heat. I got this. You know, it's going to be delicious. So I'm going to make up the mashed potatoes myself. Uh, not sure which potato I'm going to use yet. I'm still torn between two different potatoes, but uh, I'm sure you guys are planning your menu already. So, uh, Daddy Dutch uh, Barbecue, I will see you later. Thanks for joining us. But, um, yeah, so we're going to go back to Aldi's and see if we can capture some more some more specials. Uh, I do know this. If you don't have an Aldi's, I didn't know about Aldi's Club in Tennessee. I guess I didn't live in – I was living in Buena Park, so – they didn't have an Aldi's. They probably, I don't know if they do now. I don't know where the nearest Aldi's is in California, but I moved to a city that had an Aldi's. And I can go to three different Aldi's. So um, they have a great cheese section. I'm impressed. I'm kind of blown away because Aldi's is like, uh, I can't remember the company that came to California uh, where you bag your own groceries and it's kind of a cement floor. <clears throat> don't remember the name, but um, they bombed. They showed up, um, I think it was Valley View in La Palma, and it was some European place. And it wasn't it wasn't all these. It was another company that bombed. I can't remember. Um, oh, Daddy Dutch Barbecue. I'm sorry. Sorry, man. I thought you were saying goodbye to me. You were saying goodbye to CJ. See you later, CJ. Anyway, um, so uh, what's your guys' favorite grocery store? I miss Sprouts. Let me tell you why I love Sprouts. I, I know we have Sprouts out here, and we had it back in California too. Sprouts is like the price of Stater Brothers, which is a regular grocery store, and but it had the healthiness of Whole Foods. 
yes, you couldn't get into sprouts unless you use all natural ingredients and organic. And I mean, you knew every item in sprouts from one wall to the next, whether it was the meat or the deli, it was clean food and it was well, well made food. But they had the pricing, not like I think of Whole Foods as Disneyland. Okay, it had the pricing of Stater Brothers. So I could literally go to Sprouts and get short ribs for cheaper than, I mean, cheaper than Whole Foods. Whole Foods is ridiculously expensive. I hope they do. I hope Amazon fixes that. I really do. So anyway, Amazon Fresh or whatever. I'm too lazy to drive to the grocery store. A lot of people, who orders their food on, um, on the internet and then picks it up? Let me know. Chime in in the comments. Um, it's big out here. Big. I, I know. It's like people don't even want to step in the store. Like Walmart. People don't want to step in a Walmart. I don't want to step in a Walmart. It's, I mean, it's pretty scary, you know. Um, but, yeah, you can just order everything. But I don't want somebody picking up my produce. If I got to go get produce, I do go into the store. But if I just need some canned items and, you know, some creamer or this and that or whatever, stuff I know is going to be a certain way, I'll just tell them what I need. Um, yeah, a lot of you won't won't shop at Walmart. Uh, I, I'm guessing Costco, Sam's, everybody does it. So, um, so yeah, how many of you uh, just drive up and don't even get out of your car? Because, like, Walmart, they take it to your car. Walmart delivered to your house, but I don't want them coming to my house. So, um They'll take it to your car, and then you just drive off, and it's big, big out here. Oh, there's a uh, La Mirada Aldi? I didn't know that. That must be fairly new in La Mirada because it wasn't far from La Mirada. It's weird. I'm starting to forget the streets. I don't know how to get to La Like, if I had to get to La Mirada, I was at Anaheim right now. I'd have to look it up. That's funny. But, uh, oh, that I think La Mirada was right off up the 91 to La Palma, I think. And La Palma was Del Amo. Yeah, so I still remember some of those. Um, yeah, but picking up your food at the supermarket is really big out here. A lot of people do it because, like, I don't care who you are. It just gets crazy to go shopping and then go cooking, and it just doesn't work out. So what you do is you, at work, <laughs> you should be working, really. But like a school teacher gets one period off. I know a school teacher that she puts in her order. Then after school, she stop by the store, have them load in her car. She goes straight home and cooks dinner. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's see, you know, go shopping. I love, I still love farmer's markets because I, I'm a big fan of Amish stuff. You know, their stuff's fresh, uh, organic always. You know, the eggs are clean, the chicken's clean. Um, I have, uh, excuse me, I have a lot of opportunities out here that I didn't have back in California. Uh, I can get things right from the farm. That's like I said last week. That's the cool thing. 25 years ago in Des Moines, there was a store named Aldi. You bagged your own items. That might be the same. Um, that might be the same Aldi because and at the Aldi by me, you bag your own groceries. They have a, they have an area where you can bring your reusable bags and put stuff in them and all that. Do, 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 do. Uh, 50s, greasy spoon diner. So anyway, um, I'm just checking out your guys' comments real quick. So Jack on the Go, check that out. Uh, Meat Sweats, I definitely recommend this guy. He's one of the best barbecues I've had. Uh, unfortunately, and it really... Drives me nuts, as you'll see in the video. He opened the doors and somebody came in and, and bought all his tamales, except for the pork ones, bought all the cheese and, and jalapeno peppers. And I thought that, so he had, he's a, a little bit infamous for selling out of ribs and brisket and now tamales. So uh, I wish him the best. Uh, I love the guy who runs the meat sweats. He's a great man. So he's, he's fairly new still, so he still has some figuring out to do on how he wants to do that. He may just let it let it run out, and then people start trying to get there as fast as possible. So um, will you ever consider comments on again? Wow. No. No, I won't consider it. I, uh, 
I haven't been happier. The comments been off and I haven't had the hate that, that people want to spew out. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to me. I shouldn't have to read the vulgarity that's on YouTube until they can fix that. Now, the only time I will, the only time I will is uh, turn on comments. I told them when I did the member, I did the membership where people could join the channel and pay a membership like of a dollar or two dollars or whatever. Um, then I would allow, if they would only make it to members, then I'd rethink about going back to comments. So if only members of my channel can comment or, you know, or see other comments, um, I would I would reconsider turning the comments back on. Uh, the problem is anybody can comment. That's the problem. Everybody thinks they have a voice and they shouldn't. You know, you got too many keyboard ninjas out there. So uh, it's it's an I mean it's a problem everywhere. It's even a problem on Facebook. It's even a problem on. But you have a, a tighter reins on the other uh, other stuff. Do you like Paula Deen's restaurant? Yeah, one's coming to Nashville, by the way. They just announced it that it's coming to the Opry Mills Mall. Um, I will tell you this: the Paula Deen's up by um, Gatlinburg in Sevierville, uh, where Dollywood is and all that. I don't go to that Paula Deen's anymore. I used to go to that Paula Deen's and I'd mac out on Applewood bacon. Her her bacon's really good. But I found a place called, you can write this down. Um, it's a barbecue place that nobody knows they serve a breakfast buffet for like eight and change. Where like Paula Deen's like really expensive. So um, oh, it's called Bennett's Barbecue. That's it. It's Bennett's Barbecue. The barbecue is amazing. The breakfast is even better because you get all the bacon still that you can eat, all the eggs you can eat. Uh, it's great. So you can make up a plate of whatever you want for breakfast. And uh, Tammy likes her waffles. I like my bacon and eggs. So anyway, uh, it's and if you if you're going to go to Bennett's for breakfast, you got they have a coupon that if you go there for barbecue, it'll be on the table. You got to get one of their coupons because it makes it eight and change for their breakfast buffet. For each and every person so um it's really good nobody knows about it i don't think anybody ever thinks breakfast at bennett's so when you go there you'll be like the only one there we were the only ones there i did a video on it i think hey tammy do you like bennett's breakfast you know bennett's barbecue right you like the breakfast yeah so it's like half the price of paula Deen's. i think paula Deen is a uh, a cool place, great restaurant. I like their family style breakfast uh, that you select what you want, but uh, it's just expensive. So um, anyway, I don't know if you guys know what family style is. It's it's kind of like it's interesting. Like if you go family style, like at Maggiano's, it's pick what you want, and then everybody eats off the table. Um, there's a place called Monet's. If you've ever been to Nashville, there's they got I think two or three locations, and uh, Monet's they sit you at a table with people you don't even know, and you make friends, and you eat like bam, hand me the bowl of chicken, hand me the bowl of lasagna, hand me the bowl of you know bread pudding or whatever, and you sh you know you share and there's serving spoons so you're not like eating the same stuff people are eating. You serve yourself and then you eat it. So, um, but yeah, it's called Monet's family. Well, it's just Monet's, but uh, it's really good. It's really, it, I remember I, yeah, I did a video on it. You guys, when I first came to Nashville on vacation, when I was living in California, I vacationed in Nashville and we went to Monet's. And when I was done, they, I'm like, I'm thinking $20, $25 for this meal. In Vegas, it'd be a $40 meal. I know it. In Vegas, it would be. And um, they handed me a, a bill for each person got a little thing of paper with the price on it. It was $13.95. I'm like, where's the other half of this? Because I'm so used to paying California prices. So uh, I thought, and it's all you can eat. So if you want more fried chicken and it ain't on the table, or you want more mashed potatoes and it ain't on the table, they'll bring another bowl out. They just keep go, 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 go. And uh, when they run out, they run out. But it's pretty cool. It's called Monet's. And that's a family style, true family style. 
where you sit with strangers, unless you have enough people to fill a table, but the table sits like 20 people. So you may have three families sitting around the table passing food. It's pretty cool. So anyway, um, uh, da -da 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 -da, let's see. Hey, uh, is it is it Loggy DTV? How are you? Or is it Log Y DTV? I never know how to pronounce some of these names. Uh, I like convection ovens. You know what the problem with convection ovens? I got to tell you, the problem with convection ovens, you can't cook on convection because the times are always in regular baking times. So you're going to use the regular baking setting. But you know what's really cool? Frigidaire just came out with an oven. I love this. This is what makes me a supporter of air frying. Their oven air fries now. Yeah. So they have convection, they have air frying, they have roasting, they have baking, and the new Frigidaire does air frying setting. You just push a button and it air fries. That's That was my complaint. I, that's why I told you, put it on a rack, on a cookie sheet, and kind of air fry it yourself. So because some people have like four or five people in the family, and air fryers feed one. I mean, what do you get, two pieces of chicken in the air fryer? I, I get offered air fryers every week. Hey, will you review my air fryer? No. It's too small. It's three quarts. Who's that going to feed? Like, your little baby? You know, and it's just, it's just I'm not going to do five rounds of air frying. I'm not doing that. That's why I like the Instant Pot air fryer. That's why I like the Ninja Foodie air frying. Because they're eight and ten quart containers. And you can fit enough chicken or, you know, mozzarella sticks for everybody. You don't have to do rounds of cooking. Nothing's worse than rounds of cooking. Because you know what that means? Somebody's eating without you. Or if they wait, somebody's eating something cold. Uh, convection is very, yes, very close to air frying. Um, I would almost consider it, it's interesting, yeah, it's, it's got the same, it's got the fan and the heat, that's basically all air frying is, so yeah, so um, you could uh, basically uh, air fry with your convection, you could, most people don't have convection, so anyway, <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. okay, I just made hard boiled eggs, in my air fryer super. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. That's interesting because I do use the pressure cooker. Here's what I like about the pressure cooker. When you pressure cook an egg, okay, you're doing hard-boiled eggs, you can put four dozen in, like, your pressure cooker, whether it's a pressure cooker, an Instant Pot, or a Ninja Foodie. It doesn't matter. You can fit at least four dozen and you can do all those. You could also do that in a big pot of water. But basically, the cool thing about it is when you're pressure cooking an egg, it pushes the, because of the pressure, it takes the egg and pushes it away from the shell. So it pushes it away from, separates it from the shell and makes it easier to peel. The best egg that I could peel would be, um, would be a pressure cooker egg. Absolutely. So that's the advantage of using a pressure cooker to cook your, your egg. Uh, yes, I am going to do that video. Be, be looking for that. So I'm going to go to K some of you are talking about KFC. I am going to KFC uh, November 5th. The Popeye's chicken sandwich comes back. Um, I have to uh, basically wait for that chicken sandwich and then do the Chick-fil-A also. So I'm going to go with the Popeye's on November 5th. I'm going to go get Chick-fil-A. And I'm going to go get KFC. I'm getting all three chicken sandwiches. We're going to do playing with your food in the kitchen. We're not going to – I might taste them, but we're going to break them apart. And we're going to weigh the, the chicken. We're going to look at each each patty up close on the camera. We're going to show you what it truly looks like. Uh, does KFC look like it's all pressed together or not? We're going to show – McRib, no, please. Please don't ask me to eat a McRib. That's almost – that's like – I don't know if you guys know why the McRib goes on sale, but basically, I guess um, pork belly goes on sale, and McDonald's buys up all the pork bellies and then makes the McRibs. Anytime the McRibs go on sale at McDonald's, you know pork bellies dropped. When the pork belly price drops at its lowest, McDonald's buys it all. It's crazy. So I can't. I can't eat that. It's that's dog. That's truly dog food. Um, it's just like the worst pork sandwich I've ever tasted in my life. I don't even know if I've 
truly had one. I can't stand just looking at it. Uh, the, yes, I use the Ninja. I don't. Um, I use the Ninja Foodie only. I'm thinking about buying their air fryer and reviewing it. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Are you guys interested in that Ninja cooker they have? Pork belly can be very nice on the smoker. Yes. Oh, I'm not against pork belly. I'm against McRib sandwiches, which are gross. Their barbecue sauce is gross. It's all high fructose corn syrup. Um, but their but the pork pork bellies are great. If you smoke a pork belly, make sure you cure it and make your own bacon. Oh, that was so much fun. I did that on a video. Heavy uh da -da -da -da. Hungarian goulash in a pressure cooker is great. Here's, here's the key with um, whatever you slow cooked can be done in a pressure cooker for 20 minutes. I don't care what it is. You make chili, 20 minutes. You make pot roast, 20 minutes. So that's what's great about the pressure cookers is you cook, you pressure cook it on high for 20 minutes, whatever you're making, whatever you would do in a slow cooker or an oven or whatever, uh, you can pressure cook it in 20 minutes. Make sure there's some liquid in there. Now, one of the rules my mom taught me Never add water. Never add water. Water dilutes. You know, like people who cook their ribs in water first, don't do that. Don't boil your ribs. What you're doing is you're pulling all the flavor out of the ribs, all the fat and all that flavor that's going to work on the on the cooker. You're removing it, then you're cooking it. So you're going to have a soggy, no flavor rib. Um, let's see what. Hey, from Clarksville, Tennessee. C.D. Riley, 73, morning. So, um, um, so yeah, I'm going to um, tell you to don't ever add water. If you, you're putting liquid in your pressure cooker, use wine, use chicken broth or beef broth, uh, use Worcestershire, use anything other than water. Don't ever use water because water dilutes. It cuts the flavor in half. Of, I mean, it just... It, it waters down whatever flavor you got. You always want to add something that adds flavor. Okay, so chicken broth adds flavor. Wine, mm, I love cooking with wine. I love it. Um, spaghetti sauce, you can use, you know, a cup of spaghetti sauce as your liquid um, to pressure cooker something, whether you're doing chicken or whatever. Let's see here. Probably said this, but what's the best? Uh, the best pressure cooker in my mind right now is the Ninja Foodie because it pressure cooks and it air fries. I only got to buy one machine. Uh, so you go to Kohl's, get one of the coupons. You can get like 30% off coupon or go to bed. Uh, I, I shop at Kohl's all the time for my kitchen stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Or go to, um, go to Bed Bath & Beyond and get one of their 20% off an item. And then go buy the Ninja Foodie. And don't get the six quart. Get the eight quart. You have leftovers and you'll be enjoying it for the whole week. But um, that's the best pressure cooker right now. The number one in the in America is Instant Pot. But then you have to buy a second unit that does your air frying because Instant Pot does not air fry. So you want something that does everything. I don't like buying a device that only does one thing. Nothing is worse than that apple peeler because that's all it does. It peels. That's it. And you use it maybe once a year. You know, um, I am doing a video. I will tell you my Black Friday video is changing. Now, you guys who watch me every Black Friday, uh, I've always done toys in the kitchen on Black Friday. Well, we're not doing toys in the kitchen, but I'm doing the, uh, the top 10 things in, in my kitchen that I love the most. So I'm going to give you a list of the top 10 things that I love the most in my kitchen. And yes, Ninja Foodie will be on the list. Just be looking for it. Pulled pork is great in the pressure cooker. I've done that. That is real good. Uh, let's see. If you've never done pulled pork in the pressure cooker, you got to try it out. It's quick. It's easy. And then what you want to do is air fry it at the end for a little bit, for about 10, 15 minutes, and give it that crispy barbecue-ness on the pulled pork. Because you're supposed to pour your barbecue sauce in. Don't use water. Put your pulled pork in. Put a, a jar of barbecue sauce in there. Uh, put pour it all over and just have at it. And in 20 minutes, you'll pull pork sandwiches. It's so good. Can't beat the stovetop stainless. 
Presto pressure cooker. Mine is over 50 years old. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's, there, you know what? All the pressure cookers are built the same. The only reason why the Ninja Foodi, in my mind, is the best because <clears throat> it air fries. That's it. It's got two different lids. It's got a pressure cooker. It's got an air fryer lid. Okay. But you guys, you know what? Whatever pressure cooker you want to um, usually cook on high. My mom used to have the old-fashioned one. The one from the stove and go, tee, 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 tee. you guys remember that? Yeah, it would have a little rattle, had a little weight on top of the lid, and it would start rattling when it was building up pressure. It was crazy, scary. But that's that was the old days. That was awesome to watch my mom cook. Have you used the sous vide function in a pressure cooker? I have not. I didn't even know there was one. Which brand are you using that has a sous vide? I have the Jewel sous vide. I love my sous vide. And that's what I'm going to do. That's my next brisket video. You guys know that I destroy, I mean, my brisket never comes out perfect. I want it to be perfect. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to smoke my brisket for about two to four hours. Then I'm going to transfer it into a bag with flavor and seal it and then sous vide it the rest of the way. So I'm smoking first, sous vide to get it to the temperature, perfect temperature I want. If you've never done, uh, you know, if you've never done sous vide, you should. Uh, if you don't know how, I got some videos on it, okay? Let's see here. How good are, uh, I don't know, in death, in death sit ovens? I don't know. Sorry, Flip. I don't know what you're talking about there, but... Um, uh, Kevin Lynn Porter, I'm still, uh, let's see. Let's see. Hold on a minute. Um, Kevin Lynn Porter, yeah, just let me know what brand uh, pressure cooker to sous vide, because that's kind of exciting. If a pressure cooker to sous vide, and you can set it to any temperature you want, I never even thought about that. That would be the ultimate. It air fries, it pressure cooks, it sous vides. Yeah, yeah, that would be something I'd be promoting. Uh, or seasoned water, yes. Seasoned water, sometimes you may, I don't know why, but you may want to, like if you're cooking a, che a strawberry cheesecake in your pressure cooker, which, yes, you can make cheesecake in a pressure cooker. Uh, wife makes pulled pork in pressure cooker with beer. That's number one. Yes, pressure cooker with beer is even better, but you could put, like, strawberry-flavored water in your pressure cooker and pressure cooker. I don't know how that would work. I guess it would work. That flavor would be infused into the cheesecake in addition to the strawberries you already have in the cheesecake. <clears throat> Instant Pot has one. I have an Instant Pot. I'll have to go look. I don't remember um, Instant Pot having a sous vide setting. Are you sure it's, it's not searing? Uh, what you can, let's see. Uh, have you heard? No. Uh, Jack first off. Hello. Hey, Flying Snoopy. What's up? I wish I was in Tennessee because California. Okay. Well, I'm not going to talk bad about California because I have so many good friends still there and I know they're on fire still. I don't know how long. <clears throat> my question is how long can California burn? That's my question because I pray for them every day. Um, yeah, they truly, they truly need lots of help right now. They're uh, doing evacuation, state of emergency. It's, it's just, it's unbelievable. I never liked, the one thing I hated in California, every year like clockwork, when the Santa Ana winds would start blowing, the news channel would go, hey, just want to let you know, it's fire season. Why don't you just tell them to go outside and light a fire? And that's exactly what would happen. It's fire season, the red flag, you know, alert, and uh, be real careful. That's basically saying, hey, Go drop a match because it'll light up the whole thing. I mean, and it never fails. The fire gets started like right away. And it's not like, you know, it's, most of them are started. Some of them are accidents, but most of them are started in California. So, uh, but I'm not going to, uh, you guys, you know, there are things in California, there are things in Tennessee I don't like. I have issues here in Tennessee that I'm not liking because, number one, everybody's moving here now. I mean, we're like the fastest growing uh, city in America. And they're all coming from California. <laughs> it's starting to look like Los Angeles again, the traffic. When I moved here, the traffic was 30 minutes. The rush hour wasn't even an hour. 
Now rush hour is like two hours. I remember back in California when rush hour was like that. So I, I feel for my friends in California. I really do. Oh, Instant Pot Max. <coughs> <laughs> Flip says he's got torrential rain. Hmm. No fire here. Yeah, we had some bad rain come through, I guess. Um, my buddy was traveling across the United States. He said there was like major flooding going on in the south. I'm not sure. Bad throws coming up. The Gulf Coast headed for Tennessee. We never, you know what? You know why I chose, one of the reasons I chose Tennessee is we're not in like Tornado Alley. We're not in Hurricane Alley, you know. <clears throat> we're kind of in the middle. We get the tail end of bad weather. Or we get the front end of bad weather. Um, we get snow maybe for a day. Then it burns off. I mean, we're not like call. I mean, I've looked at all the states, Wisconsin and Denver. I mean, they fight snow every year. Buffalo and I mean, it's just crazy. So we wanted a place that had four seasons, not harsh weather. <clears throat> Tennessee, excuse me. Tennessee does get a tornado that touches down every so often, but not where I live. Not in this area. I mean, I'm sure one could touch down here. But um, it's been like 20 some odd years since it's happened. So anyway, um, Tennessee's kind of the sweet spot. It's right in the middle. Plus, I can I can travel to any food I want. That's the best part. I can go to Kansas City and have barbecue. I can go down to Louisiana, which I want to do a trip to New Orleans, take you guys with me and show you a good what a beignet looks like. And we'll try the uh, Cafe Du Mont's beignets. And we'll have a gumbo. And, and I want to do a gumbo on the show. I've done a jambalaya with my chef friend back in California. I want to do a gumbo next. <clears throat> I've already ordered a book. So um, that's all about Cajun cooking. So I'll share that with you too. But basically, I can reach pizza in New York or Chicago. I can go down for Puerto Rican food down in Florida. I mean, I can go for Tex-Mex. I, I can reach anywhere in a day's drive. It's pretty cool. Tennessee's the sweet spot. Why do you think all the trucks come through here? How are we doing? Oh, I'm over. Well, that's okay because I was four minutes late and I'm seven minutes over. So let me see if there's any more questions real quick. How's about, oh, okay, yeah, I don't like the bugs. I don't like the bugs in Tennessee. I'm a junk collector. Ask me how's about bugs in Tennessee, and I'm like, Mm -mm. I don't like, they have a thing called Zicada, which I didn't know until I got out of here. It's kind of like, it's kind of like locust back in California, but Zicada is like, like crickets too. It's like crossing a locust with a cricket. That's basically, they make this buzzing noise in the summertime and like you open your back door and you hear, bzzz, and it like every three or is it seven years? I think it's every seven years. Millions of cicada come out, and every 14 years or 13 years or something, there's there's two timetables. They come out uh, like in hundreds, and then, but like it, the big one is like every 13 years, and it's biblical. I mean, the sky gets dark. There are millions of cicada coming overhead, and they're all over the ground. They die on your car. They die on your lawn. They die everywhere. It looks like cicada snow. I haven't seen it yet but I'm gonna try and catch it on video for you guys. It's of biblical proportions. It's probably how, when the locusts came, what it looked like in Egypt. But um, I heard it's by the millions. I mean, the whole sky gets black. It's like nighttime. Anyway, I've only heard, heard about this. Don't like bugs. So that's, I don't spend too much time out in the back in my rocker. So any Lazy Man shows? Yeah, more Lazy Man will be coming up. Um, let's see. So anyway, yeah, great fishing and hunting in Tennessee. Um, I don't hunt for sport. I hunt to eat the animal. So if I do a deer, I'm, ha I'm making be I'm making deer jerky. I'm making deer roast. I'm making deer sausage. Um, we, we have processors out here that for like a hundred bucks, they'll cut up the deer for you and they'll season the sausage. They do everything. You just bring your deer and they'll, they'll salvage the head if you want it for like the wall, which I got one in my 
you probably seen on my tech time videos that I got a deer on my wall. But um, yeah, it's it's a good country, uh, good people. There's uh, you got a you got a friend in this if you're if you're from the city, you got to be you got to be um, respectful out here, and uh, you know because there's a lot of things you need to know. One of the things I had to learn on my own was like when it snows, nobody, everybody laughed at me. My neighbors laughed at me. The guys across the street laughed at me. Everybody laughed at me because you're supposed to, it, when it's cold weather and it's snowing and it gets all over your car, you turn your car on for 20 minutes, warm up your car, let all the snow melt off, and it doesn't build up, it doesn't ice. You know, that's what you do. So you do it like 20 minutes a day if you got like a cold spell coming through. And I didn't know that. So I'm outside with my wife and we're like the first big snow that we hit. We're like cracking the ice off our car. We're trying to open our doors. We're sweeping the snow off. And every car in the neighborhood is clean. Like nobody has snow or ice or anything on their car. <clears throat> One of the things I asked my neighbor, I'm like, dude, how, how do you keep your car like that? And he's like, oh, you just run it 20 minutes every day and it doesn't get built up. You know, the ice doesn't build up and everything. So anyway, that's so so it's kind of like, you know, um, what there's a term they use in the South of bless your little heart or bless your heart. Oh, bless your heart or whatever. Something like that. That really means something other than being nice. So it's a joke here in the South. If you're a city person, you come on vacation and the waitress all, oh, bless your heart, you know, because they're just, he, they're not being nice. Okay, so you got to be careful. So there are little things that you learn in the South. So just be respectful because you can't just go hunting everywhere. Hey, how you, Mr. Mega Fred Zeppelin? How you doing? So anyway, you can't just go into a new area of the country and act like you're going to know everything and you got to make make some good friends that will teach you how to hunt how to fish how to properly people won't let you hunt on their property they're really really stingy they don't want anybody for one they don't want you shooting around on their property and they get shot but um <clears throat> but yeah you have to know somebody it literally there's public areas to go to go um shooting but everybody's there and i, I don't trust that i want private property I don't want to go hunting when, you know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry shooting up the place. I don't want to be around. So um, so that's it. I'm going to wrap it up unless you guys got any. What city are you from, Jack? I was born and raised in Buena Park, California. I now reside in Hendersonville, Tennessee. If you don't know, where's Hendersonville? Ask, um, ask um, let's see, Johnny Cash. He's from here. Um, uh, Taylor Swift. She lives right down the road. Not a big fan of Taylor Swift, but she made this place famous also. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, let's see. We say y'all. Yep. Yeah. Y'all. I just can't do it. Jack Jr. picked up on that Southern stuff real quick. Shout out to Tammy. Hey, honey. They said hi. So anyway, uh, thanks, Flying Snoopy, for that. And uh, I love you guys. If you need anything, you can write me privately through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you're not on board, friend, follow me or whatever. And uh, we will talk privately. If you need any prayers or any word of advice, I'll give you the best I got. Can you do a video on the, I don't even know what that is. Uh, but you can email me also. Uh, you can email me if you have a recipe. I'll take a look at it. And if I think it's going to appeal to the masses, uh, don't give me a dish that nobody likes, like it's something that has haggis in it. You know, don't give me that because I'm not doing that. But uh, can you do a dish? Uh, yeah. Keep well, Jack. God bless. All right. That's it, guys. So I will see you all later. I love you. Have a great Saturday. Enjoy the games. Oh, I'll tell you real quick. Real quick for a hang up, I will tell you. Oh, I really hate the iPhone makes me do things I don't want to do. What are my picks for football? Let's see if I have them. Yeah, here they are. Uh, this is pro only. This is for tomorrow, okay? Uh, I picked the uh, LA Chargers. 
giving up four points. The New Orleans Saints, they've been winning a lot, give up 10 and a half points. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, I think, are playing somebody like crappy, like the Jets or the Dolphins or something. Uh, so I took Jacksonville. Uh, Titans playing somebody that's kind of equal to them. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, took the Steelers. Oh, yeah, Steelers are going to win. I know that. And <clears throat> even though Mahomes, is it Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes? Uh, he's going to be out of that game from what I heard. I took Kansas City anyway. So that's it, you guys. I love you. Uh, yeah, give a shout-out to your team right now. I'll leave this open for a minute. Can you do a seafood boil? Uh, I will probably do it next year when the season's at its peak, you know, when you can get all the stuff. But uh, <clears throat> I will probably go uh, look. Um, yes, I'll do a seafood boil. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it or go to a restaurant that does it and show it to you what a seafood boil is. But, uh, hey, how you doing, Crafty Corner? I will see you all later. Yes, James, uh, I will be looking in the seafood boil for you for next year. All right? What is that? Uh, answer me. Um, I love you. Uh, love you, too. All right, Steelers, but I don't like football. Oh, but you're a Steelers fan. Isn't that a Steelers fan? I bet you, I bet you own a terrible towel. I bet you a million dollars. All right, guys. Love you. Take care. Bye-bye.